we're going to watch a brief video on how hydroelectric power works. You see these dams built a lot of the time on the river, or even in a man-made reservoir. So here's the idea. You've got some water held up in this reservoir, high above the ground. There's a gate here, and the water is held back by this dam. We open the gate, and water rushes down. When the water rushes down, the potential energy, due to its height, converts into kinetic energy, which is speed. So that rushing water hits against the blades of the turbine, causing the blades to turn, and that produces electricity in the generator or the dynamo. When the water passes through, it usually exits into a river or some lower reservoir. Now I'm going to pause the video there. That's the end of the story, right? You have water up high, it flows down low, and we spin a turbine, creating electricity. That's actually not the end. There's a particular type of energy storage called pumped storage. And here's what happens. When night, uh, nighttime comes, we actually reverse the blades and we pump the water back up. And I know what you're thinking, doesn't that use electricity? Yes, it does. So this is actually going to use up some electricity. And in the process, we raise the water to the greater height. We, res uh, we restore that potential energy. And we can build up some reserves. So you see the uh, water level rises. We build up reserves, which we can then let fall back down during the day. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this seems like a ridiculous process. I mean, let's say we start with 100 joules of potential energy. When the water flows down, there's friction in the turbine. Those blades, they're not perfectly frictionless, so you lose maybe 20 joules. And so you only get out 80 joules of electricity. And then you're telling me that we use that electricity and we pump it back up into the reservoir, the tank? Well, again, when the fan blades spin and you pump it up, or the turbine blades, there is friction, so you lose some energy in the pumping process. You know, we lose another 20 joules or something. Oops. And so now, how much do we have left? What's it going to be? 20% of 80. We're losing 16. And we have 64 joules left. And we just keep letting it fall down. We lose some to friction. We pump it back up. We lose some to friction. I mean, we're just going to do this until we have no energy left. What kind of a Ponzi scheme is this, right? Here's why we do it. If the hospital suddenly needs more electricity than they had budgeted. They require a little bit extra electricity. The power plant better give them the electricity they need. And if a business requires a little more electricity, let's say that there's just some reason why we have a surge. Maybe it's a super hot day, and so everyone is running their AC. We have to keep the electricity coming. Society runs on it. So if we're going to get that electricity, that extra bit, what's the best way to get it? Should we use a power, a power plant, you know, with its coal, which is only 30% electric? And also, it takes a long time to ramp up and get another part of the power plant burning. And then once you get it burning and get the coal on fire, ignited, it takes a long time to get the electricity that you're generating you have to sync it up with the rest of the electrical grid, right? And that takes a couple hours, maybe, or three or four hours for a power plant. I'm not sure exactly how long. By contrast, these pumped storage systems, you can just open a gate, and it immediately rushes down. And when you have the electricity that's generated, it syncs up almost automatically with the grid. So this is a great alternative for responding to sur surges. That's why we used pump storage. It's one of the primary reasons. It is well suited for responding
to, you know, quick short-term surges. in electrical demand. Extremely good. There's nothing better. Moreover, compared to the 30% efficiency of the, you know, coal-fired power plant, these things are maybe roughly 80% or so. I'm not sure the exact number, but tremendously better. All right, so what's the conversion? Well, you've got gravitational potential energy of the water it flows down, that's held in the uh, tank, that water. It flows down, it turns into kinetic energy of the water. And then that flowing water, moving really fast, slams into the blades of the turbine, spins that turbine, now we've got rotational kinetic energy of the turbine. And the dynamo, the generator, converts that rotational Ke into electrical energy. And technically, it's electrical potential energy. So those charges have a lot of energy. They're all, you know, you're cramming all the positives together, just like a battery. That's what the, uh, that's what you can think about the dynamo doing. It's much uh, subtler, and it's actually AC current, not DC. But think of it as, you know, we're cramming the positives together, so they've got this potential energy. They want to flow out, and when they do, we can make our circuits work. We have electricity. Okay. So the energy that we release, it releases at some rate. And we can use power to calculate the rate at which, rate is delta t in the denominator, rate at which energy is released. So what is it that's changing? Oh yeah, it's potential energy flowing down. So we could write the numerator as mg delta h. And then what we like to do is we separate off the m over delta t. And we call this, m over delta t, the mass flow rate. And we've actually seen this already. We looked at mass flow rate in these problems. And we did the exact same thing. We separated off the m over delta t. Sometimes we'll deal with mass flow rate, but other times we're going to look at density. We're going to talk about volume flow rate. So density is mass per unit volume. And if I isolate m, I have rho times v. So let me rewrite this power equation. Power is, in place of mass, I have rho, the density, times v. Oops. And so we could write this in the following way. v over delta t times the density times the gravity, you know, acceleration due to gravity, gravitational field strength, times h. And this, uh, v over delta t, is the volume flow rate. 